Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at all the different types of plumbing fittings that are available to you on the market for connecting up your pipe. And by the end of the video you should be able to make an informed decision on the best type of fittings for you. Now some of the options that are available to you are soldered fittings, Yorkshire fittings, press fit fittings, we have compression fittings, shark bite fittings and finally push fit fittings. So what I'll do now is we'll go through these fittings one by one showing you how to connect these up and I'll show you the advantages and disadvantages to each method. So let's start with the soldered connection first. So for a traditional soldered fitting, you'd always ensure that you've got a nice square cut using a pipe slice. Next it is critical to clean up the ends of the pipe with some abrasive. This ensures that all oxides are removed and you'll get the proper flow of solder into the joint. You then want to clean up your fittings in the same way. I'm using an abrasive pad but you could use sandpaper or a pipe cleaning tool. Next grab yourself a pipe deburring tool. I'm going to be using the one on the right. And what this does is it prevents any burrs on the inside lip of that copper pipe which could impede the flow of water. Then you want to apply your flux onto the end of the copper pipe. The flux ensures that the solder will flow into the joint correctly and it prevents any reoxidation. Without the flux the solder won't bond to the copper properly. Ok so now let's put our fitting onto the end of the pipe and then pop the pipe into the coupler like so. Then you want to make sure you clean off any excess flux as it's corrosive. Ok so now strike up your flame and I'll show you some real time. So you want to apply even heat all the way around the pipe and go to the bottom of the pipe applying the heat and feed the solder in from the top. And you should get nice even coverage as the bottom of the pipe is now hottest so the solder will wick all the way around sealing that joint for a nice watertight finish. Let's take a closer look at this coupler now that it's cooled down. What we're looking for is coverage all the way around the coupler which we have so that's the main thing and that's exactly what we're looking for. Now this all looks incredibly easy on a YouTube video doesn't it? But the reality is if you've never done this before it can actually be quite tricky and you could quite easily end up with a leak if you don't use the right technique. For that reason I do think there are better methods available to you on the market. There are advantages to soldering and when it's done correctly you get a very good looking joint and you get an excellent reliable watertight seal and that's why many of the pros use it. However when you consider the learning curve that's involved for a DIYer along with the initial outlay of some of the tools such as solder you may not have, you may not have a blowtorch, the gas, it can actually be a lot more expensive than some of the other methods which we'll go through now. So the next type of fitting we're going to be taking a look at is what's called a Yorkshire fitting and as you can see by the coupler here the solder is already integrated into the Yorkshire fitting whereas the end feed soldered fitting you have to feed the solder in as I showed earlier on. So this is actually an easier technique to get very similar results. So let's go ahead and take a look at this technique now. First of all we want to clean up our pipe with some sort of abrasive. So just give that a quick clean like so. Then get your pipe deburring tool and clean the inside lip out. Then we want to flux up the end of the pipe. Now grab your Yorkshire fitting and insert it into the pipe. Then give your pipe a quick clean. Once it's assembled you want to strike up your flame. And what we want to do here is apply it in even heat all the way around the fitting. And once you see the solder oozing out the fitting all the way around it you know that the joint is complete. And if you take a look here you can see the solder on the right and left of the coupler and it's also all the way around the perimeter which means it's sealed correctly. Now I do really like these Yorkshire fittings and I actually prefer them to the end feed fittings. I just think they're easier to install and less can go wrong with these especially if you're a DIYer. Now there are going to be certain situations where either of these first two options aren't going to be ideal. If you've got a tight enclosed space and you're breaking out the heat even with the assistance of a heat mat 
it could potentially be dangerous and it's difficult to get at the pipes. So there are other alternatives available. So we'll carry on now going down the line and seeing what other options we've got. So next on the list is this press fit fitting. So let's take a look at that now. Let's take a closer look at this press fit fitting. I've sliced one open earlier on so we can have a look at the internals. So as you can see, it's quite a simple design. You've got two grooves, one on each side with the O-ring sat inside the notches. And what happens is when you get your compressing tool and you squeeze the trigger, it crushes the coupler onto the copper pipe and that will squeeze these O-rings to an exact specification giving you a watertight seal. So let's go ahead now and take a look at the compressing tool and see how that works. Okay, so here we have the Rothenberger Romax press tool kit and I'll start off with the disadvantage is the cost. A kit like this will set you back over a thousand pound and that's why it's mainly used by professionals. However, DIYers can rent these out for about 50 quid for the weekend or you can buy the manual variants off Amazon for about £100, which is a much cheaper alternative. So let's take a look at how this works now. So it's battery operated, you just get your battery, snap it in place like so. You've got a selection of different jaws here, 15mm, 22mm and 28mm. So get your clamp, loosen it off, pull it back, get the jaw, 15mm, snap it in place like so. Then pop your clamp back in and lock it in place. And then what you'll do is you put that over the shoulder of the fit in and you've got your trigger just here. And so that will press the fit in into place. So let's take a closer look at doing that now. Okay, so here we have our press fit fit in and just to ensure before you fit it onto the pipe, the pipe is cut square, cleaned and deburred. And that'll just ensure you get no damage to the O-ring inside the fit in. And all you do is just pop the fitting on up to the stop on both sides. Then what I like to do is I grab a marker pen and I'll just mark both sides of the fitting and that just ensure when we press this fitting into place, if it moves, we'll be able to tell by the marks. So let's go ahead and press it now. So if we take a closer look at the connection we just made off, you can see we've got our press fit coupler and on the left and right hand shoulder, we've got the marks exactly where they should be. So we've got a good watertight seal here. So the advantage to this method is just how easy it is to install. The disadvantage is the cost. So let's now have a look at our next method, which is compression fittings and take a closer look at how these work. So let's take a look at the components of this compression fitting. So on top we've got a knot here followed by an olive made of copper or brass. And the way this installs onto your copper pipe is you pop the knot on followed by the olive. And then you've got the threaded portion of the coupler that goes on. The olive bots up to that. And then as you tighten down this knot, that olive will squeeze onto the pipe. So if we pop it on by hand first. I just grab myself a pair of pliers, hold it in place, and get my spanner, pop that on, lock that in place, and then start to tighten it, like so. That should give us a good watertight seal now, and that connection is made off. A good advantage of compression fittings is it's quite easy to transition from copper to plastic or PEX pipe. All you do is cut your pipe, pop an insert into the pipe, and this insert just prevents the pipe from getting crushed. You then pop your olive on the pipe, insert it into the coupler, and then tighten down the knot as we did with the copper piece and that will transition from copper to your PEX pipe. Now I'll also quickly cover what to do if you find that your compression fitting is leaking. So the first and obvious thing to do is if it's leaking a little, you can always try and nip it up and tighten it up, but you don't want to over tighten these fittings because you'll also end up with a leak. 
The other thing you can do is to loosen this knot off and either apply some PTFE tape onto the olive or you can use some pipe thread compound and then you tighten this knot back up and that should fix your leak. If that doesn't do the trick I'll just loosen this knot off and show you the last option. So what you'd want to do is remove this olive and the best way to do it is either get a olive removal tool, you can get a hacksaw and cut a groove into the olive and then get a flathead screwdriver and pop that olive off. Uh, another option is sometimes you can get a adjustable spanner onto your pipe like so and then tighten it down and sometimes you're able to actually knock the olive off like so. Okay so that's compression fittings let's now move on to the shark bite fittings. Okay so if we have a look at the internals of the shark bite fitting you've got your o-ring just here followed by a rubber gasket on the inside and then you've got your metal teeth and this is a non demountable fitting meaning once the pipe goes in you can't then remove it so that's the big drawback to these as opposed to your push fit fitting where you can pop your pipe in as many times as you like and take it out. The advantage however to the shark bite fitting is if you look at the profiles the profile of the shark bite fitting is far slimmer than this push fit fitting and looks better in my opinion. And I'll just quickly demonstrate how these shark bite fittings are installed. So you just get your copper pipe like so and it just pushes on like that and it's as simple as that. Let's take a quick look at the push fit connector now. So let's just unscrew the collar and on the inside you've got a grey gasket and behind that you've got a black o-ring and that's what gives you your watertight seal. So we'll just screw that back down and take a look at this front piece. So I don't know if you can see it on camera but there's actually metal teeth on the inside circumference of this piece and those teeth bite down on the copper and that's what connects it together. So if I just demonstrate this now, I'll just unscrew the collar, get the copper pipe, insert it, screw the collar back down, and that is now fixed into position. If you want to remove it, all you do is unscrew the collar like so, push down on this tab and release the copper pipe. And it's as simple as that to do. So I do really like these push fit fittings. They're very easy, especially for DIYers to use, and I'd highly recommend them. And there is one other consideration and I'll quickly show you that now. And the last consideration is do you actually need a fitting? So this boiler was installed a few months ago and they soldered the connections at the elbows there. You could, however, just use a pipe bending tool like this. They're about £40. And all you do is pop the pipe into the tool and you bend it to whatever shape you're after. And you would just install it like so. So hopefully in this video I've demonstrated there's lots of different ways you can connect up your copper pipe. Now there's advantages and disadvantages to most of these methods. I think my preferred method is the push fit method just because it's DIY friendly. They're quite cheap. If you make a mistake you can always take the pipe out. And these days they actually do a push fit connector that has the advantages of the shark bite fitting with the slim profile and it looks quite good along with the push fit connector where you can actually demount them. So these are probably my preferred method of choice. But do let me know in the comments what your preferred method is and why. So thank you very much for watching guys. I do appreciate it and have a great day.